it actually means to put your confidence in something. So just like if you were to come sit on a chair, then you would be putting your confidence in the chair. But if you actually kind of try to hold yourself up and keep your feet on the ground, then you're not. You're not believing in that chair in the same way we need to believe in Christ. And what he did, rely on him to get us to heaven. See, because there's a really good verse that explains this. It's called, it's Ephesians 2, 8, 9. says, For by grace you are saved, by faith. And that's not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, first of all, we have to explain, what is grace? As we're saved by grace. Well, a lot of people don't realize what grace is. They've heard the song, Amazing Grace, that saved a wretch like me, right? All right, well... What does that mean, saved a wretch like me? Well, that, um, well, that means it's, un- it's something undeserved. Okay, grace means undeserved favor, okay? So that's why it says saved a wretch like me, because a wretch doesn't deserve to go to heaven, does it? No. And so what happened is God wants to save us on the basis of grace, okay? And how does he do it? By faith, and it's not of yourself. You see, faith means rely, okay? And if you're to rely, rely then you're rely- relying of yourself. You're relying on Him. You're not relying on yourself to get to heaven. You're depending on just Jesus Christ alone, okay? Now, if you were to add any work to it, it wouldn't be a grace. You see, it says it is a gift of God. You see, if you add one work to salvation, then it's not a gift of God. See, even if I said, like, you can have my house or something, even if I made you pay $2, it's still not a gift. It's still, it's extremely cheap, but it's still not a gift. You see, one of the things to ask yourself, if you want to see why are you what you're relying on to get yourself to heaven. You know, why do you think you're going to go to heaven? Think, well, if I were to die tonight and stand before God, and he asked, why should I let you into heaven, what would you say? And now, most people would say, well, I'm a pretty good person, and that's a very common answer. But actually, the only correct answer would be, by faith alone, there's there's a song somewhere that says something like, you know, at the cross, but with that one plea, but that my Savior died for me, or something like that. By the way, this is a bridge going over a road here. And then people up there. Anyway, and so, what it is, is God doesn't want us. He want, we get there, God wants to get all the glory. He doesn't want us to feel the glory. See, it says, the verse also says, so that no man shall boast. Well, if we could do anything to earn our way to heaven, then we'd be able to boast, wouldn't we? But God doesn't want us to be able to boast. He, he wants, when we get there, God wants to show His glory that, like, hey, we deserve nothing. See, that's a very foreign concept to us, right? Everything is based on merit in our view. But God wants it to be totally just by His grace alone. And that's the difference between true biblical Christianity and all other religions. All other religions try to give you some, other, some means to get to heaven, and even some groups that call themselves Christians, some way to get to heaven that you have to do some type of work, but the Bible is totally it, faith alone. And then the last verse I want to explain is it says, 1 John 5.13, I believe, it may be 14, it's somewhere around there. It says, these things I have written to you who believe that you may know you have eternal life. K-N-O-W. It says, you can know. That means 100%. That means, no matter what, you know that you cannot lose it, okay? Because if you can lose it, then it would still be by works, wouldn't it? And so, the only way for it to be by faith alone is for you not to lose it. If you say, oh, you're saved by faith alone, and then say, oh, you can lose it, you that's like a total slap in the face. That's like a total lie and a contradiction. And so, that's it. So that means that right now, okay, so let's say I wasn't saved. How would I know? I could say, you know what, in my volition, in my choice, I can choose to trust in Christ and Him alone. I'm trusting that He has enough power to get me to heaven and that once I believe in Him, I know I have eternal life. And at that point, in my heart of hearts, you know, there's no way anybody else can tell when I'm, I've made that decision in my life. But then I can say, hey, I know I have eternal life because of what Christ did. I'm going to make the choice not to trust in my own works, just to trust in Him alone, that His death on the cross was enough to get me to heaven, and that's it. Now, this is kind of a tough concept to understand, maybe. I mean, well, it's so simple to to understand, but we stumble at it being thinkers. And so, I would just suggest you go to theleafbible.com and look on their webpage where it talks about the gospel. And then, and there's even a little animation that does a better job than, than this. And you can see this. And so, yeah, thanks for listening to this. So, but anyway, I'd like to explain the Christian life more sometimes, but basically, it's it's a truth that you learn over time that once you're saved, God wants to conform you. And in the same way, you have, in a sense, have to say, I do not have the power to do it. The Christian life, you cannot live the Christian life. It must be by faith in Jesus Christ. And, well, anyway, it's going to be tough, but, it, but it's a neat thing. You know, like, there's a lot of 
truth in the Bible about you've been positionally dying with Christ, you've been raised with Him, and maybe I'll have to do another video on just that sometime. Right now, you see I walk across here, but it looks like it just rained, so this river here is flowing so much that I can't find a place to get across. Let's see, I don't know, maybe I can get across further down. I can't remember where my crossing point is. May have to come this other way. This thing might already be kind of above the 10 minute limit for on YouTube. But let me see here. This is really beautiful, by the way. It's pretty neat that it's right here in the middle of Duluth. <laughs> Try to cross me and I'm going to break my ankle here. You're watching The Truman Show with John Shirley. His life. Wow. This doesn't look very safe. <laughs> Hello. Local photographer here. <laughs> can't find a way to get across here. We have to. Uh, I can't find a way to get across here. I'm, I'm, I'm making a tape so you can be on it. This is a famous photographer here. He was... No. There's a couple logs down there that you can cross. All the way down there? Yeah, otherwise... <laughs> you kind of... Try to jump? Yeah. <laughs> you see that yeah, because usually there's not this much water flow in here. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Should I do it? Uh, I don't think so. Let's go back down this side. <laughs> There's somebody who actually spent some actual money on his equipment. Not <laughs> oh. 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 Gotta be careful here. These rocks. Okay, I don't know if anybody's still watching this, but I'll just keep rolling as long as I got batteries here. There's family with their dogs here. Whoa, it's muddy here. Dogs here.